was the 2024 Nobel Prize in Physics plagiarized. This accusation has been raised by Jürgen Schmidhuber, professor for computer science and author of some of the most cited papers in AI research. That sounds pretty serious. Let's have a look. The 2024 Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded to John Hopfield and Geoffrey Hinton for their work on artificial intelligence. In the words of the Swedish Royal Academy, for foundational discoveries and inventions that enable machine learning with artificial neural networks, networks. Their key works are from the 1980s. This was not, of course, the beginning of artificial intelligence. The idea of artificial neurons that could one day be combined to an artificial neural net goes back to the late 1950s. It was popularized in a 1969 book by Marvin Minsky and Seymour Papert. But those first efforts didn't go anywhere. The hardware just wasn't good enough. In the 1970s, it followed the first AI win with reduced funding and widespread disillusionment. Research, however, continued, and that brings us to the plagiarism charges. In the 1970s, Alexei Ivaknenko proposed computational models with multiple layers of inference, and Chunichi Amari developed a mathematical framework for how artificial neural networks could learn by a simple updating rule. Both of these ideas are still used today. Schmidhuber claims that Hopfield just republished Amari's approach and failed to cite the prior work. And Hinton, Schmidhuber says, failed to cite Ivan Knenko and used an idea based on something called the Sherrington Kirkpatrick model, which he also didn't cite. What are we to make of this? The first thing to mention is that Alexei Ivan Knenko died in 2007, since the Nobel Prize can't be awarded posthumously, it's somewhat moot to discuss whether he should have received it. When it comes to the charges that Hopfield and Hinton didn't cite these other guys, that's partly true. I looked at it and they cited them sometimes, but inconsistently. I would call that neglect, but not plagiarism. That said, I think Schmidhuber misses a relevant point. There is no Nobel Prize for computer science. Hopfield and Hinton received the Nobel Prize for physics. It was awarded to them because they connected the computer science ideas to physics. They introduced a measure of generalized energy to quantify how well a model is doing and connected the neural network idea to physical systems whose behavior had previously been studied, for example, by Sherrington and Kirkpatrick. But Hopfield and Hinton were the wants to make that connection. Why did they receive the Nobel Prize for this? For one thing, one might argue that making this connection to physics was a major step for our further AI developments. But more importantly, it's because the Nobel Prize Committee is bound to fulfill Alfred Nobel's will from 1895. I suspect they wanted to give a Nobel Prize for AI, so they had to find a connection to one of the topics in Nobel's will. If it isn't chemistry and it isn't medicine, congratulations, it's physics now. That said, while I think the word plagiarism is somewhat inappropriate in this case, the discussion sheds light on a deeper problem. It's that in science, progress always builds on prior work. In Newton's words, we all stand on the shoulders of giants. What makes it even more difficult to rate individual contributions is that human brains all work more or less the same. If different research groups have access to the same information at the same time and they have pretty much the same resources, they're likely to reach similar conclusions independently at almost the same time. The most prominent example might be Newton and Leibniz, who both developed calculus. But there are more contemporary examples like supersymmetry, for example, which was developed independently by American and Russian groups at almost the same time, or the mathematics for what we now call the Higgs mechanism that was developed independently five or six times. And as we begin to use artificial intelligence in research, this will get worse because AI is a great equalizer when it comes to 
to the use of existing resources. Soon every lab will have the same data, the same models and the same reviewer complaining about figure three. Personally, I think that the Nobel Prize is a biased, unfair and at this point also politicized award. It glorifies individuals for what's really a community achievement. Then again, this is how humans are wired. We pay more attention to personal stories. And if the Nobel Prize inspires people or motivates them to become scientists, I think that overall this is a net positive. Awards and prizes are shit until you win one, in which case it's well deserved. Trust matters a lot when it comes to science news. A science magazine you can trust is Nautilus, who have been sponsoring this video. Nautilus keeps you up to date on the most relevant topics in science today, and they frequently have scientists writing the stories themselves. What I particularly like about Nautilus is that they cover science in its full breadth, from astronomy to economics, history, neuroscience to philosophy and physics. This isn't your average popular science magazine. It's a magazine for people who care about science. Nautilus has a digital and print version. In addition to full access to all the stories, Nautilus members receive benefits that includes priority access to events, exclusive products and product discounts. If you use my custom link joinnautilus.com slash Sabine, you'll get 15% off your membership subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.